Hey guys, so I wanted to do a behind the page on a cover, the Dream Machine cover. It's a book that's coming out soon. Uh, it's my magnum opus. It's definitely the one of the coolest projects that I've worked on, um, one of the biggest projects I've worked on. And uh, it, it's just something that I was really able to flex, you know, what I can do. So this is for the cover art. And cover art is a bit tough, you know, usually, you know, it's a little more expensive when you're doing children's books for the cover art. I don't really think about it that way because when I do my work, I want all of the artwork to look as good as the cover art. I don't want to, I don't really want to not spend enough, not spend certain time on certain pieces. And I think that's why I ask for a decent image rate. Because I want to be able to just focus all my time on the artwork. So she's in a wheelchair. And it's going to be her and her sister. And, you know, wheelchairs are tough. Like, there are certain technical things. This book was very medical-based. There's a lot of medical terminology and medical equipment and things like that so it actually um it's a little tough because you really have to make sure that you that you have that you've done all of the research so that you, so that you can get all the medical things wrong because when i went back and forth you know with my clients who are brilliant uh one of them it was in the medical field and then she would, you know, refer to all of the people, you know, all of the other people, surgeons and, and doctors and nurses and everything in between, you know, the medical stuff really has to be right or else they're going to know right off the bat because that's what they do every day. This is Wiley Willie the Fox. And as you, as you can see, sometimes it flashes with the original sketch screen. Let's see if I can pause it where it where it. Here's the sketch, and sometimes I have to go back and actually look at that uh, to make sure that I'm drawing the character, to make sure that it's that he's consistent. And sometimes after a while, it's tough. You know, it's tough to kind of get them to kind of get them right. And this is the big sister, Ashling, um, or as it, this is Skylar. Uh, Skylar actually gets hurt. So Ashling is in a wheelchair. So the the first one that I was drawing, she's actually in a, in a wheelchair, but Skylar is the one who gets hurt, and Ashling is able to sort of um, and just help her in the best way that she can, because. Um, you know she she's been through a lot of she's been through a lot of struggles herself you know dealing with oi is it what well, can i remember the pronunciation of it um imperfecta it's been a while since i worked on it so it's like you know i'm a dum dum so the further away i get osteogenesis imperf imperfecta i think it is I'm pretty sure. I've said it so many times. <laughs> let me make sure. Let me let me Google it. I could check my notes, but they're in my they're in my drawer, and that would be a a whole a whole thing. Oh yes, thank goodness I was I was right. Osteogenesis imperfecta which is um, it causes your bones to be more brittle. So, you know, she's always had that, so she breaks her bones a lot easier. So when Skylar had a ski accident and wound up breaking her leg, then, um, you know, her big sister was able to sort of use what she uses to get her through, the, you know, the, the, the pain and the dark times and... You know, things like that. 
And these two little rascals, they're they're stuffed animals, but they kind of come to life in this otherworldly realm that they uh, go on. That Skylar goes on an adventure in, and they become her two best allies. And they were such a such a pleasure to draw. All the characters are such a pleasure to draw. As you can see, I do all the red my red sketches first. Uh, loose sketches. I just get it to get it to look how I want it to look. And this is it's almost like sculpting. You know, as you can see, like I'm, um, I've sculpted the, the the sketch, and then I go over in the line art, and then I just do a base color, um, and this makes it easier to cover color everything else. I do a base color of all the elements, I do the base color of the clothes, the base color of their skin. Um, sometimes I put in the actual color that they are going to be, and sometimes I put in a base color like green first. Uh, and then I slowly, methodically just go through every element and I just add color to it. Uh, once I have the, those blocks of color, then I can go in and start adding details and shadows. Here I'm just adding the um, the the skin uh, colorings and facial colorings and stuff like that. Uh, and then I slowly just start to kind of, you know, get in there with the details little details and then it's just building over time just building just building making changes as you can see sometimes I go back to the sketch stage if I'm not happy with something and I just continue to make changes and make changes and make more changes until uh, you know until I think it looks good and sometimes this process takes hours and hours sometimes it takes days because you know depending on how much time I have I really have to I really have to go deep into this art and really have to be in the moment and be present so sometimes it's hard because you know life you know you got people calling and you got sometimes there's people playing music really loudly um you know i have to go to work or i have to get up early the next day and go to work so i have to stop so it is really it, it is really difficult to sort of um get in a nice flow sometimes but you know you gotta you gotta pull it out. Sometimes you just have to not sleep. Sometimes you have to take advantage of the time that you can get into it. So I'm actually making changes to these guys too. You know, sometimes after a long time and you step away from a drawing, you step away from art, and then you kind of come back to it with fresh eyes. And I, I, that's really really important. It's very important to kind of step away because. Sometimes you can just be too close to the art. And as, as good as it looks and as done as you think you are, you'll come back the next day and be like, this is, I can't do, I, I can't, I can't move forward with this. It looks terrible. And sometimes that just happens. Um, but the majority of the time, I'm glad that I go back and change things because they wind up just looking so much better. Yeah, he looks, you know, he look, he just looks much better. It's actually funny watching these back. Even though I have the finished product, it's interesting to watch. And I see things and I'm like, oh, I hope I don't keep that. I hope I change that. You know, and then you, most majority of the time I, I do I do change the things that I find that I have issues with. His little glasses. And it's little details like that that are that are sort of tricky sometimes on a you know on a on a made up character. Am I still doing details here? It's hard to even see oh yeah, I'm doing a lot of little details on these little characters. Like glasses on a made up character is, is a little weird because their heads aren't the same shape as human heads. So here am I I'm working through the background now to try to figure out what sort of background I think works for them. And, you know, I really wanted them to be in, like, a very, like, majestic, cold, because the some of the story takes place in a very cold, icy environment. Um, but even though it's cold, I, I usually perform, I usually prefer a warm environment. So, you know, I kind of had to find a balance with, like, snow and, uh, you know, and going back and forth. And this is actually, 
sort of a depiction of the dream machine. And the way that I have it in my head, even though it's not an actual physical machine, uh, I just wanted to make a play on some of the things in the book um, to create this sort of cube you know a, a lot of a lot of what made me while i was drawing this some i i, I did get some inspiration from uh well the he-man movie what is it called i can't remember what the 80s there's an 80s he-man movie and i'm pretty sure it was he-man and they had this this uh I don't know, not a, not a chalice. It was like this metal thing, and it was like this magical thing, and it just glowed, and it had it had these things that that spun around, and it was just like this magical thing. And I, for for some reason, I sort of would think about that, you know, and this this magical sort of piece of futuristic technology. So for the dream machine, there were certain things that had to do with like certain magical rainbow lighting and things like that so i kind of like the way that feels but sort of like a glowing sort of rainbow glowing lights sort of mythical sort of 80s sort of fu futuristic uh, a little bit black mirror a little bit um harry potter things like that so i just wanted some and it was actually pretty tough to figure out how to make a glowing rainbow but for it to be a, for it to be very um, just, just to kind of get it to look the way I wanted it to look, um, in the atmosphere and in the lighting and with them, you know, I, I kind of wanted it to be a little mysterious and I wanted, I want it to be a little futuristic, but you know, that's, that's one of the things about, about this book. There was a lot of, there's a lot of things in the story and a lot of characters and there was a lot of room for me to really stretch my wings and you know just really dive down into that very creative place um, where I love to be where you know I have no choice but to come up with what I think works best and come up come up with what I think looks best and what I think could be better than any other artist could have done and that's where I that's where I find the, the most inspiration and the most fire uh, myself. Because there's certain there's certain projects and there's certain things where, you know, you're tasked to do it and, and you have really, really high esteemed people that are that believe in you and that have put their trust and their money in you. You know, it's a job and you know, for me, I mean, it's scary to think about, but, you know, I, I want it to look amazing. Like, I, wa I want to be, I want to go higher than the bar is set for me, which, you know, sometimes can be a detriment because you have to, you have to be able to finish, you have to be able to work, like, you can't spend forever on things, even though as artists, sometimes we just want to spend forever on things, but... I really just try to, I mean, that's where I feel like I do excel because when I get certain things, I, I just want, I don't, I don't settle for anything that, um, if I, to, if I were to see it, I'd be like, oh, that's really cool. Like, I don't want to see anything where I'm like, uh, oh, like, why did they make this choice or why did they do this? Or I've seen that before, you know, there's all these things and I didn't want to, I don't, I don't want any of that. Like, I just want it to be something new and something that's like memorable and um, I did sort of go a little bit with the cooler, you know, them sort of on ice. So that was kind of fun to do. A little bit of a Aurora Borealis type feel. Um, a little bit more energy with this magic kind of rainbow cube type thing. And, you know, backgrounds aren't really my thing, but uh, they, they bring so much. They can bring so much life and so much mood. So even though they're not really my thing, I, I do like playing with color and working with color and just sort of getting a, a mood from the background. But I do have to do some, some background tutorials so I can learn some actual skills. 
doing a lot of little details around here, sort of picking up a lot of this blue, a lot of this blue here um, because they're on ice. So because there's a reflection, I do want to have shadows, but then I also want to have reflections. And here I just did a mock-up of, of a, of a, um, of the title. And, you know, at this point in time, most of the details are done. Here's another major change that I think I did. So I think I was done, and then I started looking at a few of her other, uh, a few of the other drawings I did of her, and I just didn't feel like it looked enough like her, so I had to go back and completely redo and redraw and recolor um, you know, the main character, because it just, you know, it has to look consistent, and as much work as you put in, and even though as many lost hours as that is going back and fixing the face, it's like, you just have to do it, you know, you really just have to, you really just have to say, okay, well, it is what it is, you know, I should have fixed this before, but I'm going to fix it now. And it's always worth it to put in that extra time and, and fix it. It's always going to be worth it. I hope I didn't, like, pick my nose or anything. I, I completely forgot that the cameras are on me. So hopefully I didn't do anything embarrassing. Well, that's, that's life, I guess. Um, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Oh, yeah, I'm still slowly working away at, at her face. But again, it's like, it has to be consistent. And that's one of the major things, you know, with doing these characters is they have to be consistent. And that's just something that I had to learn, you know, I had to learn along the way is how to sort of figure out ways to make your, make sure that your characters are consistent. Uh, and it's not, it's not that easy. It's really not easy. But, you know, sometimes you just have to go back and, kind of line up everything after the fact. And the more, the more I do it, the more I've done it in different um, book projects, the more I'm aware of it going through. Because there's always going to be a difference when I start a book, the first drawings of a character, and then once I've drawn that character 50 times, it's just going to look better. Like, that's just the, the nature of it. Like, the, the character's going to look better I'm going to have learned to have draw him, to have draw, I'm going to have learned to draw the character much more efficiently, much more quickly. So sometimes I have to go back to the beginning and redraw those because they just look better, you know, as I've learned more about them and more about their design and proportions and how they, how they work together with other other parts of the art. So I think I'm almost done here. I think I'm almost done. Just kind of get that, getting the lighting right. And I wanted to do these, like, this, uh, the foreground, the blurry foreground. You know, I love that. Darkened up a little bit of the background and really kind of saturated a little bit. And, um, yeah, so here's the, and here's the final. I love this text. I think it's like Queen in line grunge or something. Really great text. And you can see um, for Skylar or for um, Ashling, uh, her sclera is a little bit more blue. That's another. That's another um, aspect of OI that she has. So, so you know, they were very clear on making sure that that was, you know, just visible enough to because, you know, everything has to be true to, um, you know, the situations. There's Willie. It was actually really fun uh, making Skylar's sort of ski outfit too. That was really that was really fun. 
Here's Kincaid, the mole, cute mole. I really like her shoes too, actually. Very Who Frame Roger Rabbit style. But yeah, so that's just a quick rundown of my thinking on the Dream Machine. I hope uh, I hope that was enjoyable. I hope you got some tips from that. I cannot wait till this book comes out. I'll probably start posting some more things about the book once it hits the shelves. And I can't wait to get my copy because it's been a long time. It's been a long time coming. And I've done a lot of work for this book and I've worked with some really great people. And it's been an amazing growing and learning experience for me. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that. So, as always, keep drawing and I will catch you all in the next video. Hi, my name is David Reed, illustrator of The Dream Machine. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of this project with a brilliant writer and a brilliant doctor. And we wanted to share with you a little teaser of our magical story, The Dream Machine. Ashling has broken her bones a hundred times. She was born with osteogenesis imperfecta, OI, which makes her bones very fragile and brittle. 16-year-old Ashling witnesses her eight-year-old sister, Skylar, fall and break her leg during ski practice. Ashling helps Skylar deal with her pain by using her dream machine. A machine that conjures up stories of imaginary worlds to distract her from pain. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate you. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Drug Free Dave. And don't forget to join my private Facebook group, Procreate Tutorials and Guidance. Check me out on Facebook. Hopefully I'll see you guys soon. And as always, keep drawing and I'll see you in the next video.